This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to continue our talk about motion effects inside of Avid Media Composer. We're going to talk about two things specifically. One, I want to talk about a very common problem that a lot of editors run into and that is how to do motion effects with frame rates that don't match the frame rate of the current project you're working in. And then I want to focus on what we talked about in our last lesson, and that is the motion effects editor, how we're going to get in, utilize it, make sure that we have everything set up the way that we need to have it set up, and how we're going to be able to get in and do variable speed motion effects right from within your Media Composer timeline. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And let's pick things up right where we left off in the last lesson. Now we talked in the last lesson about how to get in and to set up shots to create motion effects. I'm just going to mark an in point. It doesn't really matter where, even here is very good. We'll just mark an out point right down here. And we're going to want to get in and to create a motion effect with this shot. Now before I move on, I do need to point out that we are working, as you can see up here, in a 1080i project and this clip is a 2398 frame per second clip. Now Media Composer likes to play a little bit of a trick on everybody. What I'm going to do here is just get back to my bins window and I'm going to navigate to the motion effect editor button but as we know on the preview side of the composer window when we select that it's going to bring up the motion effect creation window. Now you can go through the whole process. We'll just assume we're going to put everything at 50%. I'll just even leave it as duplicate field. And what's going to happen is as soon as we hit the create button, we're going to get a little error message from Media Composer. Well, not necessarily, you know, an error message, but basically just a little pop-up that says a motion control cannot be created from a clip with a non-native format. You must open a project matching this clip's format to make a motion control from it. What does all of that mean? Basically, it means you cannot use the motion effect creation command with a non-like frame rate clip. Now, that's technically, you know, I always like that show Mori Povich, you know, where he pulls out the lie detector and he says, you know, Media Composer says that you can't create a motion effect from a non-like frame rate. That's a lie. Because that actually is a lie and we can actually do it. We just have to do it in a little bit of a roundabout way. What I'm going to do is say, okay, now there's a couple ways that we could do this. What I'm going to do is just take this clip and just drop it into my timeline. Now, once I have it in my timeline, you'll see that I can just hit play and there's the clip playing back. And all I'm going to do now is simply navigate over to the motion effect editor. I'm simply going to click on it. And now once I have the motion effect editor up, all I'm going to do is simply promote this element or promote this clip. I'll just come back and hit play. It's the exact same shot that we had before. The only difference is that now we can actually get in and create a motion effect with this shot. Now, one thing I want to point out, I'm just going to undo what I did right there, is I'm going to navigate up and I'm going to hit promote again. And I want you to watch what happens right down here on my shot, right over that little green dot. Now, if you're not familiar with the green dot, what that actually represents is the fact that there should be an adapter there. Now, to be honest, I find the adapter is annoying to look at in my timeline, especially if you're dealing with hundreds of clips. But we can navigate down to our fast menu and just say show adapters. And I believe the only adapter that I'll have on here is the temporal adapter. Yes, meaning that a time change has occurred. Of course, the conversion from 2398 to 2997. Now, again, I'm just going to switch that off because, again, I find that slightly annoying. There we go. And once I promote this shot to be a shot that we can create a motion effect with, you'll notice that an icon has appeared over top of the shot, looking much like the icon that we have to create the motion effect. Now again, if I just undo technically what I have done 
by promoting this shot is I've done the exact same thing as if I was to go into the effects palette, navigate down to the time warp section, and take the time warp effect and drag it and drop it down onto the shot. Now, of course, it doesn't apply because this technically already has an effect applied to it, but what I'm going to do here is just take our good harvest shot here, and let's just drop a bit of it down here. Uh, that's probably about good right there. I'm just going to drop this down like such. You'll see that we're now dealing with a like frame rate because I've lost that little indicator that we have a temporal change going on here. And again, we're just going to head right back to the effects editor. We'll grab time warp, drag and drop. There we go. And now you'll see that the motion effects editor is ready to go. I don't need to promote anything because technically I've already done that. But we're now ready to get in and to work with this shot and to create some slow motion or some time lapse, some sped up effects. Now there's a couple things that I want to point out in here. The first thing is that by technically promoting this element, which we could do if we had just created the motion effect inside of the preview window, or by using the time warp effect, the first thing that's exceptionally important to figure out is what is your source and what is your output? Well, the output is going to be directly based on the type of project you're working in. If it's a progressive project, the output will be progressive. If it's an interlace project like we're working in right now, the output will be interlaced. You'll see that we have interlace set right here. Now the big question that always comes up is what exactly is the source? Because the source might not necessarily be, you know, obvious right out of the gate. Now this shot is a 1080i shot that we're working with. We know that because when I took it, I dropped it into the timeline. We didn't have any adapters or anything like that. So we know that it is 2997 interlaced. But what we actually want to know is the source of the clip, not what it is in Media Composer, where did it originally come from? Now I know that this shot came from a 2398 source. How do I know that? Well, because I converted it to 5994 and I added the pull down that needed to be added to get this shot to look correct inside of Media Composer. So what I want to do is that with the source, I want to change my source to be Film with 2-3 pull down. Now you'll notice that we can choose interlaced if your footage is interlaced right from the beginning, if it's progressive, or if it's progressive repeated. Now again, like I said, I know that this is quote unquote film with 2-3 pull down. Now the question is, what is the pull down method? Now to be honest, I'm not really sure, so I'm just going to get Media Composer to figure it out for me. So I can simply hit detect, and now this shot is ready to go. Now what's important to keep in mind is that because I haven't really done any actual slow motion or anything like that, you're really not going to notice a change at all in the shot. Now, next thing that you're going to want to determine is what type of motion effect you want to do. Duplicate field, both fields, interpolated fields, VTR style, blended interpolated, or blended VTR. Now to be perfectly honest, we have fluid motion draft and fluid motion in here. I very rarely, well I say very rarely, okay I'll be honest, I never use either of those two parameters. Uh, in most cases, I stick, you know, with VTR style or blended VTR style. Again, completely up to you. Uh, play around with them to see which which look is going to give you the look that you're going to want to go with. Now, for what we're doing right now, I'm just going to stick with just regular VTR style, nothing too fancy, okay? So I can select regular VTR style, and of course, then that does beg the question, how do I actually get in and change the speed of the shot? Well, this is where we're going to get in and utilize the speed graph and the position graph. Now, I want to be honest with you, there's one of these graphs that I use 100% of the time, and there's one of these graphs that I use 0% of the time. The one that I use 0% of the time is the position graph, but I do want to explain to you exactly how this graph works and how you're going to need to look at it if you decide you want to get in and work this way. Now, I'm going to come all the way back to the beginning, and you're going to notice that in the graph, that our time starts at 2 seconds and 11 frames and goes up to 20 seconds and 11 frames. But you'll notice that if you take a look at my timeline here, we're right at the beginning, and our starting time code is one hour. It's not two seconds and 11 frames, and our ending time code is uh, about 19 seconds, okay? So if I come back here now, what exactly does this number represent? Well, this number doesn't represent the uh, time code that's in my timeline. What it actually represents, if I match frame this shot, is the starting time code of the actual source material. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that, of course, this looks like it's a little bit longer than what we have in our timeline because we're dealing with 23 frames in a 30 frame per second project. So technically, we're losing 7 frames a second. That's why this appears to be longer than it actually is. It's just giving me a visual representation of what the time code is. Once it's dropped into the timeline, we have some pull down that's being added. Okay. 
Now, like I said, I pretty much never ever use position because I find the speed window or the speed tool just to be so much more of a user-friendly graph to work with. So let's just turn our position graph off and let me show you how the speed graph is going to work. It actually works very simple. If you're a visual type of editor and you like to get in and just grab and drag your keyframes because that's basically what this is as a keyframe, I can just take it, grab it, drag it down to 50%, hit play, and guess what? Our clip is now down at 50%. Now, if you're not big into dragging and you really want to be precise, you can simply just come down to the value input area. I can just punch in 66.666 and I can hit enter and there we go. We're now down at 66% speed. But where this really shines is how we can get in and create dynamic motion effects right from within Media Composer. Let me show you how this is going to work. We're going to put everything actually back. I'm going to put it a little bit uh, above 100. I'm going to put it at 150. Okay, now we're going to leave it at 150 for a while, maybe till about here. And then what we're going to do when we get here is I want to take this and slow it right down. Okay, not too much, probably down to about 50%. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to add a keyframe. I'm going to add a keyframe by simply hitting the add keyframe button. We're going to come down a little bit, probably to about there. We're going to add another keyframe. And now all I need to do is to simply grab that value, just drag it right down here to 50% let go and we're all good to go. Now I can come back and hit play. We got this sped up shot with the transition down to the slow-mo right about there. Very cool. Now it doesn't give you a real-time playback inside of the motion effects editor inside of the speed graph, but that's okay. You see it happen right here. Now when you grab and drag, you'll see that we get a dynamic representation of what's going on and we can see the bar moving in the graph. Now something else I do want to point out, we were talking about grabbing keyframes and repositioning them like such. You'll notice if you attempt to grab the keyframe you say well maybe I want this one to start a little bit earlier. If you take it and try to grab it back down the timeline it doesn't work. So how do you get that and move it down the timeline? Well what you're going to do is you're going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows and by doing that you can now grab those keyframes and drag them wherever you want to go. Now if you want to make sure that that keyframe stays perfectly level, you're going to hold Option or Alt and Shift on the keyboard and that will snap that keyframe to the value so that it doesn't get adjusted over time. Okay, so we're going to slow this element down to about here. We're going to add another keyframe. We'll come down a little bit to about here and let's just put the value back up. We should just punch it in the old-fashioned way, 150% right there. Now, of course, because we got a little bit of extra shot to work with here, I can add a little bit more time at the end by just trimming it here. There we go. But again, what we've basically just done is created a dynamic motion effect inside a media composer, literally, you know, in a matter of about a minute. It's a very, very cool and very simple way to work. And, it, you know, it pretty much avoids you having to export this clip and go to an application like Adobe's After Effects to work and create effects that look like this. Okay, now a couple other things that I want to point out with the with the speed graph here, let's come back to our speed graph. Let's make sure that we have our clip selected here. There we go. Now you'll notice that we have a very, uh, very curved animation here. We're basically easing out of this keyframe, easing into this keyframe, etc., etc. We could change that at any time by simply right clicking. We can come down and change this to linear. We can change it to, of course, Bezier, and we actually get the handles on our Bezier curves. Another great one is the shelf option. What is the shelf option? Well, you remember in the last lesson, we talked about basically the downside with creating the motion effects in the preview window is that if you're adding it in between, you know, in the middle of a shot, let's say you're going to have that guy slam dunk in the basketball, you want to then go to the slow-mo. It's basically a cut to the slow-mo, which can seem a little bit jarring as opposed to the technique I just showed you. But sometimes you might actually want to create that effect and you can do it very easily with the shelf parameter. Now you'll see regular speed and it's going to cut down to be slow-mo right there and then do the same thing going back the other way. Okay, so I hope the last couple lessons have shown you how simple it is to get in and work with motion effects inside a Media Composer. Whether you're creating them from the preview window by using the motion effects input dialog box or whether you're creating them using the time warp effect or the motion effects editor, you can easily get in and create these time warp effects inside of your Media Composer timeline without having to take everything and export them to a third-party application. 
Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.